Right, oh, here's a cracking bit of heritage before we've even actually started the walk. Here at uh, Harlington House was where John Bunyan was presented to the JP, the Justice of the Peace, for field preaching. And during the prison sentence that he served, 12 years, he wrote The Pilgrim's Progress. That's kind of amazing, isn't it? That sets the tone for today, maybe. We are out on a proper adventure today, but I feel like I should tell you more about it when I found the footpath. Just walking through the village of uh, Harlington here in Bedfordshire. And we're gonna go to a couple of amazing locations. Look at this, is so, look, this is like, it says the Grand Hall opposite the Carpenter's Home, the first English Grand National Steeple Chase took place in 1830. Over there, it's littered with history. This is our footpath here. Right, an adventure awaits. I was just thinking we haven't had any of these kind of lovely burnt grass summer walks that I so look forward to on the long days. And finally the summer's arrived. It's, it's early July. Well, it's the 10th of July today, so it's, you know, we're a third of the way into the month and finally this week it's arrived. It's about 24 degrees today, so it's hot enough to burn, but not hot and so hot to worry about it, you know, for it to be a concern, although it may be a bit draining later on in the day. So the plan for today is we're going to go to an amazing place called Sharp and Ho Clappers. What a name. And it's an Iron Age hill fort, an Iron Age fortification here in the Bedfordshire Chilterns, magical countryside. I've been wanting to do this walk for a number of years. I initially planned it, I spotted it, and I started to plan doing it with the brilliant Dave Binns, who you've seen on previous sort of earthwork walks. And then a number of things contrived to stop Dave and I doing this walk together, including, <laughs> you know, that little thing that occupied the last couple of years. And so finally, I just thought I have to go out and do it. I've been waiting to this walk for about five years now. And I wanted to get out into the fields on these beautiful, hot, long days, you know. More for the end of the walk than for the actual walk itself. And this seems perfect, seems perfect. We're going to get some, climb some high ground, walk in the Chilterns, and then there may be a very special ending. Well, I'll say it now, I think maybe we'll go down to Wallard's Bank and the source of the River Lee. What do you think about that? Today's walk will require a fair amount of map work, which, as regular viewers of these videos will know, isn't exactly my strong point. So, you know, there's no guarantees really where we'll end up but we'll, I think we'll aim for an adventure, whatever happens. Certainly a case of uh, <laughs> mad dogs and Englishmen going out in the midday sun today. It's exactly midday and it feels a bit hotter than the 25 degrees. My phone is saying it is, but I'm not complaining. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Um, as you all know as well, I do love a good earthwork. So I'm really excited about Sharp and Ho Clappers, apart from the name. And then we could also go to Ravensburg Castle, which is nearby, but you can't actually access it. I think it's on private land. You, I think you can see it. So we'll do one of the other, I think. If we don't go to Ravensburg Castle, we'll go down to Wallard's Bank. I feel like we should go to Wallard's Bank if it's possible. But this area here, the Chilterns, and particularly this part of it, you know, the Icknield Way leading into the Ridgeway is so rich in prehistoric remains. There are earthworks all along this chalk ridge. Of course, the Icknield Way, which we'll be walking along a little bit later, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's known exactly how old it is, but it goes way, way, way back, thousands and thousands of years back. So maybe perhaps the first people to cross the land bridge from continental Europe onto what was once a piece of land tethered to Europe by that land bridge. So we really are walking through history today in the most profound way. I 
wonder if this is the start of the, uh, the ridge of land that we're going to walk along today, the spur. I think we have to climb some quite high hills at some point. There's something vaguely Tuscan about this landscape, isn't there? Only just started to gain elevation, but already just look at that view through there. Absolutely stunning. I love this landscape so much. As many of you will know, I mean, I, I am a child of the Chilterns. There is something special about coming out here. Just the views you get from these chalk ridges are just stunning. I think you're looking down into the Midland Plain. I'm not a geographer, I might have that wrong, but that's what my memory tells me. Because you get a particular kind of landscape from this chalky earth around where I grew up further west from here <laughs> in the uh, South Chilterns it's kind of chalk and flint it's very you know, I think it says a lot about the character of the people as well as you feel a combination of things the kind of softness of the chalk but that steeliness of the flint and now up through the cool shade of the trees I'm not entirely sure of the correct path to take now neither would be tragic it's either here past the burnt out car, which probably takes me to Upper Sundon, or I go this way, but then I would still need to turn right. So let's see where this path leads. I think this is the correct direction. Wow. Well, it was the correct direction just to get this view. Look at that, that's unbelievable. Just checking the map. I realise that actually we're not that far away from um, Maiden Bower, which is a similar type of earthwork, which is the last time I think I did a video with Dave Binns. I think that was 2017, I might be wrong. So it kind of continues the mapping out of the prehistory. Is that prehistory? I don't know. Or well, the ancient history of this area on the kind of Bedfordshire, Hertfordshire border. Great to see these two way markers, the Ignild Way Trail and the Chiltern Way, which is the way that I need to go to Sharp and Ho Clappers. And it's just as well that I saw them there because I would have carried, <laughs> I would have gone the wrong way, I'd have gone that way. It's such a glorious day. I've only been going an hour and already it's absolutely stunning, isn't it? Unbelievable. trying to think the last time I was out on the Icknield Way and it very well may have been when I went to Pitstone Hill which I think is back in 2016. Wonderful walk there that day obviously that's where the Icknield Way and the Ridgeway intersect. I will put all of these videos in the uh, in the video description below and I'm wondering if that big promontory there that we can see jutting out is Sharp and Ho Clappers. It very well may be, and it looks like it's in the right position. It's too hot today for these sheep. They're uh, resting in the shade of the trees here. This is that point where I feel like I've read the map correctly. It's telling me to go a different way to my instincts. But then again, my instincts are usually really off kilter, aren't they? 
but this is where the walk could go a little bit pear-shaped. <laughs> Bizarrely, I think I might have got it right. I don't want to speak too soon, but this seems to be en route now to Sharp and Ho Clappers. The excitement is building. It's almost impossible to be walking in a rural English summer landscape like this one and not think of that wonderful TV show, Detectorists. I know I mention it a lot, but why not? I love it. And particularly with the theme of history on this walk as well. Such a magical show. Whenever I look through the camera and I'm shooting the fields and I'm seeing the insects flitting amongst the grasses, I hear the detectorist's music. And as I say that, I can see the path here. <laughs> so let's take this path. And there's actually, there's a zine that you might be interested in if you enjoy that TV show. Called, it's called Waiting For You. And it's a, a detectorist zine. If you just Google that, you'll find it. Isn't, isn't that brilliant? I love things like that. And it's you know, a physical thing that you buy and they post it to you. Brilliant. We're now on the Bunyan Trail, which is really how we kicked off the day today, wasn't it? Back there at the site of his trial. I think this bench here, drinking in that glorious view, is a good place to have my lunch. Well, that was a great lunch stop. Fantastic view, look. And now, just uh, not far to Sharpen Ho Clappers, hopefully, anyway. I've been walking for just over two hours, five miles. It's good, it's just about quarter past two. So uh, I don't tend to stop for too long uh, when I'm doing a longish walk, because otherwise, I don't know, you lose momentum really. Momentum's really important when you're doing a long walk, I think. Um, so, and I do like the idea now of going down to Wallard's Bank. And I haven't really worked out the distance there. I think there's a number of routes I can take. So there's a lot of number of options. But um, yeah, so it'll be a, you know, it's going to be a significant distance today. So if Google Maps is correct, this here is Sharp and Ho Clappers, an Iron Age earthwork. That is such an imposing ridge, isn't it? The end of the spur. No wonder they chose this as the site for their settlement and whether it had a defensive purpose or not, we'll discover in a minute when I check my notes. So it's Sharp and Ho Clappers, it's what they call a promontory hill fort. And its defensive strength comes from its topographical location rather than anything that was built or constructed or any kind of earth moving as such. And you can see it's pretty obvious, can't you? Just how dominant it is within the landscape. And it also notes as well that, that would have conferred a certain status upon its inhabitants because they'd have been visible for miles and miles around. I mean, we've seen that even today. As soon as we left Harlington Station, we could see this ridge here that we were heading for. You'd have, you wouldn't have messed with the people of Sharp and Ho Clappers. They have um, done some excavations and they found some timber, um, timber work that would have been around, sort of timber palisades, I guess, and there was a, a trench it was cut across that was lined with timber and there were trenches around that to defend it as well. So it would have been a really significant location. I think there's also evidence of um, Roman use of the site. Of course, I mean, it confuses me slightly when we say that because the Iron Age kind of takes in the beginning of the Roman conquest of Britain, doesn't it? So sort of there is a bit of a, a crossover. And when you look at that kind of system of earthworks that run through the Chilterns, it gives you an idea of the civilization that existed here in the Iron Age, doesn't it? There would have been a really rich culture in these hills here along the chalk ridges. It really fascinates me to think of, of their world, the world they inhabited and what knowledge they had of each other and the movement throughout this landscape, the characters that there would have been here. Oh, it's rich for the imagination, isn't it? 
So I think there is a path that cuts across somehow. It's really quite a steep climb, so let's give it a go. Yeah, these steps are gonna be quite hard going on a day like today, or probably any day actually. This is really hard work, and that's without anyone actually defending it at the top, throwing spears and boulders and stuff at me. So here is the summit. This is where there would have been the settlement up here at the end of the uh, spur. Amazing. Wow, and this is looking out from the uh, western edge. That is a stunning view. Absolutely stunning. Looking back into the centre of the settlement here, at the end of the spur, right on this promontory. And you can see why they chose it, can't you? It's quite easy to give these places kind of uh, significance, more significance than you would if you didn't know its past, I guess, but there's a kind of real stillness to these places. It reminds me of like Loughton Camp and Amesbury Banks in Epping Forest, that when you come here, they possess something, you know, it's sort of latent in the ground. It's not just a, a kind of strip of woodland at the end of a spur on a chalk ridge. It's got, it's got stories that reach back millennia and are tied to the very story of why we're here today, why people live in that little village down there continuing on the settlement that was established here thousands of years ago. It's amazing. Right, let's now walk to Wallard's Bank, the source of the River Lee. It feels like the perfect place to end this walk now, doesn't it? Oh, this is an interesting moment. Here's an obelisk in the middle of the wood on Sharping Ho Clappers. Maybe where I was before wasn't the actual center of the settlement. Let's go and see what it says. This is interesting actually, because it says uh, Sharp and Ho Clappers was bequeathed to the National Trust by W.A. Robertson in memory of his brothers, Norman Cairns Robertson and Captain of the 2nd Battalion of the Hampshire Regiment, who died on the 20th of June 1917 at Hanover in Germany, and of Lawrence Grant Robertson, 2nd Lieutenant, 2nd Battalion, King's Own Scottish Borderers, who was killed in action in France during the Battle of the Somme, or near Delville Wood, in July 1916. Um, that was my grandfather's regiment, the King's Own Scottish Borderers, my paternal grandfather, my dad's dad, who thankfully didn't die during the First World War. It's interesting. This looks like it could be uh, the outer bank of an earthwork. This would be the uh, southern side of, of the kind of fortification, if that is what it is and not just a natural feature. Yet more glorious views. I think that's looking northeast towards uh, Ravensburg Castle. But we, uh, we won't be going there today. We could go there another day though. And here's looking south. I have to say, this is right up there with the most picturesque walks I've ever done. I nearly just went in the wrong direction that would have taken me away from Wallard's Bank and Lee Grave and all that. So I may need to go away from Streetly and along the hills on the far side, but I can follow this path for now and then possibly cross over or hopefully just carry straight on. So I do have to turn away from Streetly for a while. This really is a scorched earth, isn't it? I'm really feeling the heat now. It's uh, 
four o'clock in the afternoon, more or less the hottest time of the day now. I really am wearing out the word wow. I mean, but wow, look at that. I think Streetly's just up here, or certainly I hope. But my, my word, what a zigzag walk to get here. I didn't film it because I just kind of had my head down going forward because I'm feeling the heat now, sort of after four, and it's when the heat really hangs in the air. You can probably hear the Luton Road down there. And my word, it's such a circuitous route, sort of zigzagging in and out the whole way. I seemed like I was near those radio towers on the edge of Streetly, just there. And the walk went over there, back in, then back out and around that wood and back up. Oh. <laughs> All adds to the beauty of the day. And I quite like those bits sometimes where I have to turn the camera down and just get some distance under my belt. So it's added a, it's probably added a mile or two to the walk, but all good because I've got plenty of time today. It's one of those long, beautiful summer days. Right, I need to go along this road into the village of Streetly and find some cold drinks, hopefully, before we do the final bit of the walk to Wallard's Bank. Well, that was an incredibly pleasant repose for about an hour. Sunk a couple of pints of San Miguel, lovely cold beer. Uh, and now I'm going to crack on and maybe slow my words a little bit, you know, but I think you'll understand and forgive me under the circumstance. Wow, Streetly Church looks like it's a church of some heritage. I will look that up when I get to the, uh, to the edit and put the date on the screen. I don't want to break the rhythm of the walk. This is a delightful spot. Often when I go on my walks, I walk past a, a country pub. I'm doing a long walk and people say, I wish you could have gone in that pub and shown us that pub. You should have gone in there. And I say, no, I never like to break my walk because if I go in the pub and have a couple of pints, I'll never get going again. But today <laughs> it's been so hot and my water in my bottle has been like heating to almost like tea temperature as I've been going. And so uh, once I realized there was no shop in Streetly, I thought that is the only place I'm gonna get a cold drink. So uh, I filled up basically, had a couple of pints of nice cold beer and they very kindly filled my water bottle. So we're ready for the way ahead. I'm not gonna make a habit of that. You can see there's exceptional circumstances, 10 miles on a very hot day, hmm, five, at least five, six miles to go. Now we're moving into a cooler part of the day. It's half past five, quarter to six. The Wimbledon final's finished. Wallard's Bank awaits. Theoretically, this is now a very sort of straightforward, more or less straight path down to the source of the River Lee. Could you get a better ending to a walk than that? I'm not entirely sure you could. Such a beautiful evening. This is the part of the walk that I really live for, actually. So the whole other thing is just a prelude to this, this part as you walk into evening. It's so glorious. This kind of fills you up for the winter months. This gets you through those winter months evenings like this. Walking back to the camera, I'm not walking in the opposite direction again. <laughs> All praise the pylons. That is actually a t-shirt you can get from my merch store, which is <laughs> below the videos. That isn't why I said it. I really love these pylons, I think. Just real kind of titans striding across the landscape, aren't they? 
I have to say, at this stage, the path isn't as well defined as I would like. It On the map, it just cracks straight on. But it could be either side of this hedge. It could be on the right here, or it could be here. If I have to turn back, that may be. But just look at this view here. I was really fearing that this corner of the field was going to be a dead end and I was going to have to either go all the way back to the village or walk around the edge of the field. So it's, um, I've never been so happy to see a, a gate in my life. Into a cool, dark wood. Not murk wood. It's got a very benign feel to it. But you never know, I guess. So it looks as though we might be hitting the uh, edge of Luton sooner than I thought. I think this is uh, Bramingham on the other side of this field here. And then we uh, skirt around the edge of Lee Grave to Wallard's Bank. So one of the best things about summer walks is walking through a field like this. I think this is barley, isn't it? I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong. This is what, uh, <laughs> this is what summer walks are all about, walking through fields of crops like this. On a footpath, I'm not going rogue. It's great. So many of my uh, field path walks are in the winter when you're ploughing through mud. <laughs> so things like this are delightful. Nice contrast. You need a bit of yin and yang, don't you? So this is the path that I think skirts around the edge of Lee Grave. I could be wrong, we could be a little bit further out, but it's the general direction. This is an absolutely classic scene where you see the houses on the far side of a field of what I think is barley. That's a classic example of, you know, suburbia rubbing right up against the fields. So that water tower there, you can see on the far side of the field, that marks the point where we turn for Wallard's Bank and the source of the River Lee. Surely it can't be a coincidence there's a water tower near the source of the Lee. Here's the water tower. So presumably Wallard's Bank is nearby. It reminds me of those images you see of Soviet brutalism or something from the, uh, the sort of communist Yugoslavia. So I think this is the footpath that goes down to Wallard's Bank, the place where it all begins. So we've got a bit of a, a footpath through the trees down to the source of the Lee. It's only really dawning on me now how significant this is. Presumably this here is Wallard's Bank, said to be a Neolithic henge monument. I think I've got the location right. Obviously its source, its proximity to the source of the Lee is massively significant. So they say, one of the, one of the explanations at least, is that this area here derives its name from Lu or Lug, the Celtic god of light, and that the river here is Lu's River, Tun being a settlement, Lu Tun, the town of Lu, the Celtic god of light, the Li being the river of the god of light. Which feels apt, doesn't it? Because the Li is the giver of so much life. To East London, to the area where I live, to everything that we walk through, all these walks I've done along the Li Valley, and they originate here on the outskirts of Luton. I've got to go and find some water <laughs> somewhere. If I don't see some water at the source of the Lee, I'm going to be really kind of, uh, I'm going to be a bit miffed if I was honest with you. But then again, maybe that's it. Maybe that's part of the story. These things don't always deliver the postcard of what they are. The river gods will hold back their mysteries and make you work for them. They believe Wallard's Bank dates back to at least 3000 BC. So this site here is over 5,000 years old. That's incredible, isn't it? I love the way it's marked by these three blue tower blocks. The River Lee, the mighty River Lee, the sacred River Lee, rises somewhere here. 
I really need to find some water. Well, this here may very well be the source of the River Lee, but there's not a drop of water down at the moment, is there? I think this area is known as Five Springs. It's a bit of marshy land here on the edge of Wallard's Bank where the Lee is said to rise. Maybe I've got it wrong. There's nothing there at all, is there? Wow, and here we go. Here's some water. Here's the source of the River Lee. Isn't that amazing? This is where it begins. It makes its way down through Bedfordshire, Hertfordshire, then into North London and down to Leamouth and into the Thames. Wow. This must be one of the most sacred spots in all of England, in my opinion, and I'm a bit biased. It's great to see the midsummer sun shining down on the River of Light, the bright river, the River Lee. What a perfect end to this walk today. Lee Grave Station is just up here. So that's the end to this incredible walk. Amazing walk, what a day. Eight hours, it's just eight o'clock now. Eight and a bit, really eight and a quarter hours. Couldn't have got here today in the heat without that stopping the checkers at Streetly for a couple of pints. I may need a couple when I get back to Leightonstone as well. So as ever, thank you so much for joining me on this amazing walk today. I hope we get more walks like this before the summer ends. Fingers crossed they. And as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you in the next walk, wherever that may be. I'll do a retake, but I'll leave, probably leave them both in. I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Wow. Mm -hmm.